Article. Okay, so it's numbered Article 30, full-time Fire Prevention Secretary. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $45,365 to bring the Fire Prevention Secretary position to a 40-hour per week full-time status. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32,76 and shall not lapse until the hiring is complete or by March 31st, 2017, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. No. Or an article figured, present, figure presented is for 39 weeks from April 1st to December 31st, 2016. The annual cost thereafter is $60,000. $486. She already, wore, she already moved it. I, I'm moving it. it. Has to be moved so we can vote on it. I'm, oh, I'm, oh, oh, oh. She moved it. Right. You okay, I'll second it then. They, Physical uh, impact, no finance department, the estimated 2016 tax impact on $45,365 is zero. Per one thousand valuation. Zero? It's not zero. Christina put those in. I haven't filled in the notes. Oh my god. Okay, so don't there's we don't know what the tax impact is. Point zero one six. Oh I'm sorry. Zero point six. Like zero. I said, these just came across my desk and I one haven't six. been back. One point six pennies per thousand. thousand. Yeah. But it's zero one six. Per thousand. Point zero one six. Yeah, okay. Add it to the rest of okay. the people. Thank you. Well, that's the first one we have with the tax impact. That's right. No, the statins. The only one. Let's get on with it. All right. The James, point is zero one six uh, on the thousand. I can tell you that that would probably be the biggest bargain you're going to get here in the town of Hampton. Because this fire prevention secretary's position is responsible for coordinating the office of fire prevention uh, for all of the business billing, for all of the business permitting, for all of the um, recording of documentation. As you may have heard through many of the Board of Selectmen meetings, there's discussion about uh, room and meals tax. They bring that up and they bring a number up. And when they do so, they usually use the term 300, or they, they use the number 353 businesses qualify for room and meals tax. That's just businesses that qualify for that. They all require an inspection. They all require filing. They all require documentation. Uh, currently, we're on a list, and um, my fire prevention secretary, the part time position, um, has been working 20 hours a week, and we are we have caught up tremendously, as many of you know from uh, from the last time I saw you. Um, we, we had a tremendous backlog. We've caught up, and we've done a really tremendous job of, of marketing that area and moving forward so that the businesses don't have to wait. There's no more lag time. However, this is a proactive firefighting. This isn't uh, you call us because it's burning. Instead, we're going out to make sure that the code's being enforced so that buildings are safer. In order to do that, we have to record that we've gone there. We have to record that the buildings have done the appropriate um, tasks to make them safer. Uh, to that end, we get plans on new construction, site files. We get architectural plans. They all have to be filed. They have to be documented. Um, any business in town that has a hood needs to be cleaned. We need to have documentation to prove it. We're moving forward in the Fire Prevention Bureau because of this position. I can guarantee you that. Um, the organization in the office has has gone up um, exponentially. I can't tell you what it looked like before. It, it looks like my desk now, if you were to come see my desk now. She's done a tremendous job in that room of just organizing things. Um, payments are being made with a fee schedule that the Board of Selectmen proposed and, and passed in February, and those payments are being logged and they're being deposited on time. Last year at this time, we were months behind in even depositing checks. So we've come so far, it's, it's really, it's unfathomable to see the change. Um, the fire prevention secretary sits right up front. If you've been to 141 Econet Road, our fire station over there, that's the front office next to fire alarm. That's our business office. <clears throat> fire alarm operators are extremely busy people. They answer the call if there's a medical emergency, if there's a fire, um, just day-to-day -day business calls they're handling. But when it comes to coming in for permits, that goes to the fire prevention bureau. Having somebody at that window all open hours is extremely important because if not, we're missing business personnel. So this position is responsible for answering that call. Um, when I talk about the 353, I'll come back to that now. I began with that. Those businesses require inspections. They need to be categorized. They need to be made scheduled. So we aren't going to go into them randomly. Um, as you might know, down at the beach, there's several businesses that close for most of the season. In order to get into those businesses, we have to call them, we have to schedule with them, and it's a very short window between the time that they prepare to open and the time that they do open. 
So we have to schedule all of that, and that falls on the fire prevention secretary. She's extremely important to our organization, and having a full-time position would maximize our leverage on, on making this a better organization, especially for the business community. I'll answer any questions you have. None? Around the table. Yeah, I go. This person is making <clears throat> over twenty-one dollars an hour right now. Negative. Well, I mean, I'm looking at what she's making, and I'm by, by the hours. No, that's that's full-time position that you're looking at. I believe her salary right now is fourteen forty-six, and Christy, you may have that. Close it's fourteen forty-six an hour. Right it now. is fourteen forty-six. Is that right, man? It's close it, in that ballpark. I yeah. do know that. It's a union position. <coughs> it is. It falls under thirty seventeen, and currently I. And it's in the 14 range, and it's the lowest salaried in the department. Why didn't we, uh, for some reason I got 21, I'll have to check my math, but uh, why didn't we just go to 28 hours a week instead of 40? I believe that this position warrants 40. Um, to go up an eight right now, um, I don't know that I would be able to get a part-time position uh, to fill the extra eight hours. Ms. Welsh, who is currently our fire prevention secretary, has another part-time job. So she's unable to leave that one for a continuance of a part-time job. See. Now, would she be in a group one or two retirement fund? One. One. Mm -hmm. Group one. I mean, it is 1446. I did have my breakdown sheet. Right okay. Right and Thank you, ma'am. So she is currently making 1446. All right. Thank you, ma'am. And a group one, right? Yes. <clears throat> she's already under our schedule for uniform allowances, so she's already receiving uniforms, too, so that wouldn't increase. Yeah. Uh, I'm just uh, philosophically agrees adding uh, uh, against adding any more full time people. And I understand that, but if you talk to Mr. Tinker, as I have recently, um, the changes that are occurring, we're at $3.1 billion protected property in this town. Now, I talked about the numbers lightly, but when we start to look at that, $3.1 billion, the growth that's occurred, the exponential growth, it's been a straight up line if you look at a bell curve right now. It, it, all you have to do is drive down the beach. Right? 581 Econet Road, 128 Ashworth Ave, 14 N Street, 30, 31 through 33 Ocean Boulevard, 377 Ocean Boulevard. These are huge, enormous structures. We are no longer just waiting until everything's done, going in, touring it, and leaving. We're doing rough inspections. We're doing permitting for fire sprinkler, fire alarm. The growth that's occurring is requiring us to do more. It just really is. Is she going to go out and, 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 and essentially start inspecting uh, property? She is not going to be inspecting. She's not a firefighter. I'm, that, oh, I'm done with my questions. Okay. Now this, I'm sorry, 60000 is a projected salary for four years. I believe that also includes, if I'm not mistaken, that also includes all other incidentals. I did. I just stole it from you. That sixty thousand includes all the That's retirement, the health, and associated personnel costs. I believe that was what we were trying to put it forward at, right? Right, Seven. but the, he's asking about the sixty being complete. That's also that's also other. What, does that include? Yes. Other that includes uh, <coughs> her salary, social security, Medicare, retirement, health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance, and workers' comp. So a complete package. Yes. That's the complete package. The salary is $36,067.20. Sorry, I just gave him my cheat sheet. You can have it back, ma'am. The other one will read it. Okay. <laughs> no. He doesn't want the number. <laughs> Uh, just to go on public record, I, would, I definitely support this. Um, I have been dealing with the fire department on both sides of it. My sister's a fire alarm operator down there. I see how busy they are. I know how miss, busy Miss Welsh is. Um, but having worked down the beach last summer um, and trying to coordinate with the department to get a uh, assembly permit, one of the many permits that you do that I found out at your last visit, um, my boss vehemently expressed how much smoother the process was um, from years past to this year moving forward. And um, I, I, I applaud the efforts that uh, your department is doing to accompany our seasonal businesses down the beach. It's, you know, you get a bad winter or a late winter like we had last year with a lot of rain or schools let out differently. These businesses are trying to squeeze every dollar out every weekend they can. And every day they can get open quicker, they will try to do that. Um, a lot of times 
in the years past, it's it's been hung up on that. And that process has gotten exponentially smoother last year um, from several businesses that I've talked to. Um, so I can already see how her position is affecting it. And I can only imagine that if this goes through, it will affect it even more um, to streamline the process and make it more efficient. I fully support this article. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Mike? Um, how long has she had this position? Though? She was hired February 9th of 2015. Okay. So you're saying... Am I hearing everything correctly? Everything's really improved tremendously in the last year. And she, there was nobody doing that function before, correct? Uh, for an interim, we had a uh, fire, fire prevention secretary that um, resigned in July. Um, and, you know, I won't get into the reasons that she, that was her decision to do so, but she resigned. So that position was vacant from July through February. We started the hiring process, I believe, in November. So it took us about uh, six weeks to do all of the, the corresponding testing and, and background checks. So. And was the fire prevention secretary full-time or part-time? Part-time. So I guess what I'm getting at is if everything's going so well now, leave it alone. I mean, why, cha why rock the boat? If we're doing fine now, why add any more expense to the so if we look at a simple um, permit of assembly, as Mr. Bartle just brought up, a permit of assembly causes us to go out and inspect for life safety. Uh, it causes us to inspect the, the fire alarm system, the sprinkler system, and also the hoods if there's a restaurant involved. Um, seasonally, we do this once a year. All other businesses, we do this once a year. By law, we're supposed to be doing all the businesses that aren't seasonal twice a year. We're unable to fulfill that role alone right now. Um, so it's not that we're, we are making great strides here. We really are. We could do so much better if we had the adequate personnel to do it. Well, the, the, what, the thing, the point that Nick brought up, which I appreciate, uh, everybody knows that does business at the beach every year. They know the beach is going to open roughly a certain date. If they don't plan ahead, that's part of doing business. You plan your business to get the inspections, give you plenty of time to get the inspections done, and I can't see any urgency. I mean, they were complaining a little bit last year. I understand that because there's some other issues going on at the same time, but this year there's nothing going on like that. So I have no no relatively, uh, no concern directly, and what I've heard indirectly is everything's going fine. So I'm all set the way it is. Thank you. Uh, and I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Pierce. Uh, one of the things that you just said, though, is that they complained a little. They didn't. They complained a lot. Complained we had a, a lot, lot of problems in town. And there's another component, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to put any more on the business owner than I have to. Um, certainly, they could call us a little early, whatever it might be. But a lot of these business owners, they're not locals. They come in for a little while, you know, they do their business, and then they go elsewhere. A lot of them summer and in, um, winter in Florida. So they're not going to come up earlier, especially when we have a winter like we did last year, to attend to a business that they can't open anyway. They're not going to take off the boards until they're ready to do so. And then trying to fit everybody into a two-week span is really difficult. Additionally, as you might know, I mean, you've lived on the beach a long time. It's not often um, some of the businesses, and I won't say it that way, some of the businesses don't remain. So they come in the first year, and they're there, and we do the inspection. The next year, it's somebody else who's the owner. So they're not able to just say, all right, I need to call the fire department and get them there on time. They don't have experience with that. They've never been there. It's a new ice cream stand versus an old T-shirt shop, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of variables that go into this. And with the, the changes that have occurred, 339 Ocean Boulevard, it's all commercial underneath with residential above. 275 Ocean Boulevard, commercial underneath, resident, residential up above. Each one of these requires an interaction with our business office to, to operate. They really do. Inspections, all of this, uh, yearly inspections, maintenance inspections, these all require some sort of interface. And this office is the way they do it for the business portion for the fire department. Mm -hmm. Mike, just want to add, having been in the business down there, um, while it was being said that there weren't any complaints, and this is going back to when I worked for U.S. Food Service, there were a lot of complaints down there. <clears throat> and one of the problems that I think will never be resolved is the seasonality of the business, and then beyond the seasonality of the business is the weather within the season. Like this last year, where you know we might think spring starts towards the end of March, it didn't. St we had snow on the ground in May, and that creates a bigger crunch. And on top of that, a lot of the work that needs to get done, they don't even have people hired in in March and, and April. 
So it does become a crunch, and as long as we're a seasonal community, that's never, I don't ever see that getting resolved because nothing, weather doesn't cooperate, and it does back it up, and we have a lot more eateries than we had, you know, even two, three years ago, right now, from the sake of needing inspections. So I just. I think yeah, the, the phrase there is that uh, spring is a great day in New England. Yeah, it is. You know? So we're, we're looking definitely to fit everybody in, but it's difficult because we're all trying to shoehorn in the most amount of time, uh, and, you know, they want to be open. Yeah. They don't want to prepare to open. Yeah. They want to be open. So and I, the only thing I want to add to that, James, is that I think that a lot of people think, well, okay, well, you know, you've got to plan for it, and if you're in business as an owner, you have to plan. Yeah, no, they've got all those things that they're up against, but on top of that, if they're not open, regardless of what the reasons are, then our locals aren't employed. So that's, it's like a dominoes. There's another side to this, too, which is code enforcement. And, you know, she's, um, the, the position itself is really important. I don't, I don't want to talk about a person. I want to talk about the position. Um, but Ms. Welsh, uh, in particular, has taken it upon herself to do a lot of study with code. And so our preparation for the businesses and, and contractors, building owners that are coming forward, she's done a lot of research to make sure that our forms are completely code compliant and so that they understand it better. Mm -hmm. um, if you look across the nation right now, there's an awful lot of things going on in the fire world. As of this morning, uh, today alone, in the last 24 hours, according to the United States Fire Administration website, six fire deaths were, were reported in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday morning, there were 12 residential fire deaths. That's 18 people that died in, in residential fires. Mm -hmm. This all comes to code. This comes to that. So there's a component of the job that we need to get our fire prevention officer, who is Bill Payne, doing an outstanding job. Um, he, he needs to go do his job, but he needs to go do the job. He can't be setting the schedule and the time frame to do the job. He can't be permitting because that's the function of the administrative assistant. The secretary should be scheduling him, okay, you go here, you go there. And she's doing that right now, but the volume is about to hit, and we know that. I'm, we're going to look at the end of April. We are going to be unbelievably busy in that office. So, you know, this position is, is, is extremely vital to our organization. So she's doing three days a week now? She's doing five days a week, part-time. So she comes in Monday afternoon at 2, Tuesday at 2, Wednesday at 2, Thursday at 8 a.m. till noon, and Friday 8 to 2.30. Steven? You run a well-managed, very lean department. If you're asking, this is the only thing you've asked for. You haven't said, I need two more firemen or four more firemen. And I know that <clears throat> you have nine people on. Yes, sir. 24 hours a day protecting us. Um, I am completely for doing this. If you ask for it, you need it because you don't ask for you're not running an operation that's got all kinds of fat in it. No, sir. You know, it's a nice, lean, well-managed department. So if you need this, I'm fully for it. Thank okay. you, sir. I like on on the uh, wages, uh, Chief. Jerry, in. can we go in order? Okay. Bob had his hand up. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of other considerations I'd like to throw out there. One, the business community is very beneficial from a revenue point of view to the town. It doesn't produce a lot of students in the school system. Half of the year it doesn't produce any waste treatment issues, recycling or rubbish pickup issues. It is an open. Further, the image of the town and how it's treating the existing present businesses has an enormous impact on the ability to attract other businesses to the town. These people and business all talk to each other, and if we are making it difficult or slow for them to conduct their business, other people are going to know about it and be less willing to become part of the town. Thank you. Yeah, yeah my, my point uh, before on the wage is the book and the budget shows this position at 22,558 for the year. And that breaks down to 433 a week. And if you divide by that 20, it comes up to $21.69 an hour. She, I can tell you right now, Mr. Sonoy, she's being paid 14.46 an hour. And the book and if is you'd like, I'll grab her pay stub, but I know she she's being paid. I would put it around 15k a year as opposed to uh, 22,558. Just wanted to make sure I I, I didn't, it comes to what? I just wanted to, it's, it's about 15k. Uh, if you if you multiply uh, fourteen forty six as a member of the of the 20. union, 
obviously she would fall under the negotiations of the union. So any type of, of salary changes, that's not in my purview anyway. That's up to the negotiating committee, the town manager, and the board of selectmen to decide. So, uh, what was the number you said, Jerry? Twenty. Yeah, uh, the book has got it at twenty-two five fifty-eight. And if you divide by fifty-two, that's forty. That's four hundred and thirty-three a week divided by twenty is twenty-one sixty-nine. She also was not hired for the entire year fifteen. Just so you know, she started on February 9th. Yeah. Well, I mean, they got it in here now for at uh, twenty hours a week. 52 weeks a year. How much revenue did the position bring in? Well, that's a really good question. Her position doesn't generate revenue, but through um, Mr. Walsh and the Board of Selectmen, they they um, basically tasked us with develop, developing a fee schedule that was more compliant or at least more in line with what the, um, the today's standards are. So uh, it, when we did that, it was on February 12th that it got implemented. Um, we began tracking, and up to that point, from January 1st to February 12th, we uh, took in $495, I believe. And since that point, we've taken in 21000 and change. That's money we didn't have before? That's absolutely money we did not have before. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, sir. Um, <clears throat> just to, to clear the fog in terms of what we're doing here, we've had a high time fire prevention secretary for forever. Before I got here. That's correct. Right? Yep. <laughs> In my eyes, yeah. And now we want to go full time. Correct. The new person that we hired in this position, effective in 2015, uh, has caused a tremendous change in the organization. Correct? Agreed. Prior to her arrival, there was considerable degree of disorganization Four years. There, um, there was, yes. And four years, there was a delaying of getting licenses by businesses primarily on the beach as a consequence of that disorganization. For those same years, it had been argued over and over that what wasn't needed was organization. That wasn't even on the radar. What was argued was we need another fire inspector. It turns out once we got a secretary that came in to do more efficient organization, the need for that fire inspector seems to have gone away. Given that in 2015, there's been no issues relative to the timeliness of getting license renewed. I would, in I fact, would count on that. The Board of Selectmen actually did have a warrant article out to put a fire, an initial fire inspector in, and they took it out of the warrant on the basis that things seem to be fine now that things are more organized at the fire department because of this particular hire. So on, on your points, I would say that um, because of the organization, we are absolutely uh, operating at a much more efficient uh, standard. Um, the fire inspector is absolutely essential. And here's why. I've already told you that we're missing out on one inspection I, I, per year. For business. About the fire right, neither am I, but you brought it up. So at the no, end of the I'm day, up the we can't. Why the board She's of the, yep. chose not to put I, I can't speak for that as a demonstration of how efficient the organizational skills that this new person has brought to bear, there has been no problem. That has been a problem for years. There has. Um, one of the things that's not being represented, though, uh, Deputy Kennedy and myself, we were responsible for the inspections. So uh, Bill Payne, who was the fire prevention officer, was hired uh, August 10th of this year, right? He was promoted to that position August 10th. Uh, prior to that, the deputy and I were doing all the inspections. That was two of us going out full-time to reduce that backlog. Currently now, we're still going to have to do that because we don't have a fire inspector coming. That that position still needs to be filled, so it has to be filled by someone. So it's going to be filled by us. Um, the organization, though, and if, it, you know, anybody who has a, a world-class secretary will tell you that they could put anything in front of you, you just sign it, right? So I could be signing for a new car for her. But she does this, and she schedules us. She says, you go here, you go there, you go there. We all do it. And that's our job to go do the job. But she has to make sure that we are re ready to do the job. She has all the proper documentation so that we can go out and do the inspections. There's actually, you know, there's three people doing this job right now of inspection. In this season, Bill Payne's doing it alone um, because we're in a slow season. You keep talking about season. What are you, what, what, what are you referring to? When you say April, season? May, June, July. April, that's going to be May, huge. June, July. Then, Four months. Nope. Then we're going to see fall. In the fall, we have transitioned to the permit assembly. We have moved a lot of them to the fall because we were hammered so hard in the beginning that we were unable to keep up. So the, the, the yearlies, for lack of a better term, the one, the businesses uptown, 
Um, we try to get in there in the fall. We try not to do uh, fours or, or restaurants up there on Route 1 uh, at the same time that we're opening at the beach because it's just it's too monumental a task. So what we're trying to do is spread it out. What Stephanie has done in particular has gotten um, proactive in the approach. She's now email. She's now sending uh, snail mail, we call it, right? Hard mail to the businesses to let them know what they need, gives them the permit um, applications in advance, and we return it. The problem was a problem, but it was previously stated in other meetings. Yes. Was that you could only issue annual licenses. You cannot issue seasonal licenses. So the license is always for a 12 month period. Is that true? I don't know which ones you're talking about. When you mean permit of assembly? Well, I'm, I guess I'm speaking about uh, all the licenses that you are engaged in, particularly with regard to opening up businesses at the beach. Right, which I don't license. Um, what we do is we give a permit of assembly, so we have to go make sure that life safety is taken care of in the build, building like that. So we give a certificate. Basically, we do the inspection. We say, yes, they're compliant. And then we issue a permit of assembly, so now they can so have... 12 months only. It is. You can't issue one for nine months. You can't issue one for 18 months. It has to be 12 months, right? They're currently a year. We have done uh, temporary. Uh, Smarty Nose has had events where they've done a one-time event, and we've gone to inspect it and done, you know, done a temporary permit of assembly based on the fire protection engineers calling for whatever the. So could you issue it? <coughs> well, we could. I, 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 I'd have to go back to the code on that. I'm not sure what the what the state law RSAs dictate on that. We have safe C6000. I don't, I don't know off the top from, of my head. From uh, testimony that was given in 2014 when. when Discussions about all of the complaints that were coming in in 2015. Mm. Uh, that one of one or more people. <coughs> I'm sorry, I can't. Okay. I believe it was selectmen primarily okay. that were inquiring uh, why you couldn't uh, issue a permit uh, in, you know, earlier in the year or later in the year. Uh, to some of the businesses to smooth out the distribution of the licensing activities. And we have. And the answer was, we can't do that because it's based on things like their elevation, uh, elevator certificates, okay. and other factors I see what like that. Sure, I understand what you're saying. So I can't require people to do work that they've already done. I can't ask them to do a second test in a year or anything like that. So if, if a business has come along and they've had their elevator um, test, everybody gets a state test. Um, we get one at the, at the Brown Avenue Fire Station. The, the cost of that is, is borne by the business owner. So they're only able to do that every 12 months. As far as fire alarms, they can inspect them every day if they want to. They can inspect sprinkler systems every day. There's a cost associated with that to the business owner, though. So for us to, uh, to give a permanent assembly, all of the tests for sprinkler, for um, fire alarm system, if they have a hood, the cleaning, if they have an elevator, the, that, um, they all have to be in in advance the, to get to Mr. Pierce's point. The business has to be set up as it's going to be uh, during so the opening. If I had an elevator certificate issued to me on April 1st, yep. and I call you in on May, yep. and I want an occupancy mm -hmm. permit, we're good. It's going to give me a 12 month certificate until next May, even though my elevator certificate expires in April. Yep, because I'm not the elevator company. You're going to have them come back in, and then when we come back to May, I'll have already, Stephanie, but we'll have already sent out the application. Something different from what I understood from okay. the discussions that took place in 2014. Okay. A while ago. Uh, so you're able to now distribute the licensing activity uh, more broadly so you don't have the crunch time in the spring, which is really was the big issue in prior years, correct? We've done that. Right. Yep. So it was really the springtime crunch that was killing you guys. And that now, was, that now was you spread that out. Yeah, that was huge. It was also with this new person uh, in the old position, the new person in the old position, with her organizational skills, that's just added to your ability to Absolutely. Uh, satisfy the... Uh, the need of the public to get the licensing issued in a timely fashion. Sure. Is that fair? Yeah. We started a new task because we haven't done anything in uh, the businesses that don't require a permanent assembly or a hood inspection if they're not a restaurant. We we do something called site files. So if we responded to a business, pick a business. I don't care. Why what don't you to describe how right. it became more organized? I'm just well, no, but this is moving forward. We haven't completed this task yet either. Um, we have a lot of businesses that we don't know anything about. They've, ex they've existed, but they didn't come to us other than, you know, the, the first day. So right now, we have to get on site files, and that's what she's doing here. We're moving forward with that. I, I, have, no, I have no doubt. Gentlemen, if you pardon my interruption, I think we've discussed this. Thank you. Quite a bit. We get that. He's almost finished, ma'am. I think most of us get the picture. Wrap it up, please. Tim? 
I've been shut down. Oh, no, she. No, I'm asking that we, we we just expedite this conversation. Could you wrap it up, please? Andrew? I'm done. I've been shut down. Okay, let's let's, let's All right. Move. We've had a conversation on anyone who hasn't asked a question. Okay. We have the motion out. Um, all those in favor of this warrant article? Okay. Opposed? Abstain. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen.